I used to be a manager at NASA's budget and network, and I was a security person uh, back in the day. It was much for me. Um, yeah, I have really a really excited to see how cyber security, well, cyber security has been elevated to me, and we see the respect that it does. And I'm really happy to see all the diversity in, the, in this business area, because trying to meet their emotional needs at other people's expense. And it's not everybody. You know, it might be one in 10, one in 20 does this, but it's enough to cause chaos in your career. And I'm hoping that the, what I'm presenting today will be just one more toolbox in your career skill set that will help you uh, evaluate uh, how effective feedback is for you, whether it's just somebody being hostile to your face or if it's a, a sit down formal review with your manager and it's not doing you any, it's not helpful. So the concept of smart feedback has been around since the 80s. It first in, uh, appeared in Management Review in 1981. So it's been around a long time, but it's recently gotten a lot of, a lot of uh, focus because there's an emphasis lately on con and continuous feedback with your employees. And, and with your teams and with back, you know, up the chain to management. And, but feedback is a two-way communication for all kinds of business communication, which would, whether it's personnel reviews, whether it's your agile stand-ups, your daily or weekly stand-ups, or any evaluation conversation. And some people will take advantage of this format to sort of get step out of line. And I want to give you a, a framework with which to evaluate that quickly so that you don't get taken advantage of, and so that your career goes as far as, it, as possible. Um, so what is smart feedback? It's specific, it's measurable, it's actionable and achievable, it's realistic, it's relevant, very important, and more importantly, respectful. And what you walk out of there is a, is a schedule of actions. It's broken down into actions. A feedback is not just goal, not, well, you just need to clean your room, or you just need to get organized, or we believe that, you know, whatever. It's like, no, 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 no. It's what you need to do to achieve, uh, to achieve those goals. And what you need to do is going to be measurable. So, um, and there's ways to, to get to this point where you can actually evaluate people on the fly so that it's, it's fast. Um, so inappropriate communication happens all the time. It's not because somebody's a bad person. They just may be having a bad day, bad week, bad year, or they just don't have time. But you need to make them have the time. That's your right. They need to give you appropriate feedback or, or they're wasting your time and theirs. So uh, the reason why we have more emphasis on agile communication or fast communication, frequent communication, uh, you'll read in articles that, oh, it's millennials require more feedback. They feel safer. It's absolutely not. Oh no, it's because businesses are more agile. And in order, you've got to have this constant communication to meet your business goals. It's not because of millennials, there's no, there's no putting it off onto you. Those young people, oh my God, it's like, no. It's business has changed. Business is agile. You need agile feedback. You need frequent feedback and it needs to be appropriate and it needs to be effective. So, um, and it also needs to focus on the future. If you're trying to sort of correct a, a situation, then you don't focus on that past. You say, okay, here's where we are. Here's where we need to go. So it does need to be focused. You, you talk about what will be done, who's going to do it. What, like if I were giving you feedback, I would tell you what you have at your disposal to make that happen. I, are you going to have access to new databases? Are you going to be able to liaison with another team? Things like that. And how the success is going to be measured. Are you going to, you know, is there a, you know, a deadline for this where you have to deliver to a client or, or is it an internal, internal review that you've got to meet? 
um, and, and the outcome when achieved. What is it you want to see when it's achieved? And that there are no just statements. Well, we just feel that you might need to blah, blah, blah. No, <laughs> that's what you would get at a sorority meeting. That's not business discussion. That is not business talk. Whenever you see these words or hear them, just feel, believe. That is not business-like. That is not professional. That is inappropriate. You don't need to throw a fit about it. You just go, well, that's not specific enough. Can you provide more data? Things like that. You need to tease it out of them because people will do this if you let them. They'll let you gloss over it and never get to specifics. So the just statements, you just need to clean your room, young lady. It's like, that's not helpful. You know, you look in the kid's room, and they've got everything from the time that they were babies in there, and then now they're in fifth grade. What do they get? It's, of course it's a mess. So you, you, you help them as a manager. You bring in a box. You go, okay, everything from babies to, you know, second grade goes in this box. Everything from third to fourth grade goes here. And what you need right now to do your job as a kid to have fun, to, so you have good access to your crayons and not to good night moon, you have that out and ready to go. So you take that approach with your employees, and you expect that approach from your managers. That's what you want from your managers. You need to get them to help you to get your job done. And it's, of course, never about personality characteristics. And people will try to do this to you, especially if you're ASPE or you're some other you know, group, some sort of diverse group. Maybe there's some miscommunication or something, and they want to put it off on, well, maybe it's you. It's like personality characteristics have no place in a feedback session. They have no place in a business discussion ever. Of course, if you can tack on the words Missy at the end, or young man, or whoever you are, who do you think you are at the end, then you know you've got a problem. You don't want to hear any sort of elevated emotionality during a business conversation. It's not appropriate. You should check your emotions, strong emotions, at the door when you come to work. They can save that for friends and family. Um, so the specifics. Uh, when, you're, when you're talking to an employee or you're talking to your manager, you want to hear about actual on-the-job events. If they're saying, well, we think, you know, this is happening, they need to uh, back it up. Where's the data, right? And, and if they say, well, we think that maybe you said something wrong to somebody, this is important and it does happen. So if that does happen to you, say, Can't, where, where's, where's the direct quotes? If that was not written down, then they don't have, then what do they have? It's, it's gossip, right? So protect yourself. Request the quotes. Request the specifics. And um, the, uh, the people who are giving you the feedback need to say, I want you to do, not we believe. It's like, who's we? This sort of veil of management, who are they? Your manager needs to own up. And if you're giving feedback, you need to own up to what you're saying to your employee or what they're saying to you. And no comparisons to other people. That's apples to oranges, always, always, always. And there's a lot of people out there that like to use uh, examples from like the military. It's like, oh, this team did the same thing every morning for a year, and this team always won, and that team always lost, and we switched the leaders, and blah, 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 blah. It's like, oh, heck no. Those stories are usually anecdotal, and they've been so edited as to not even be related to what really happened anymore, and it's rather manipulative. And it, really, it's not, it has no place in your feedback. It's wasting your time. You need specifics. That's, I mean, it's nice, but it's anecdotal, right? not specific. Um, and again, you know, we feel, we've decided, we think. Use the word I and don't use just feel, think, believe. Measurable. If you're talking to somebody about their performance, you need to use percentages, numbers, and rates. You need to use, you know, consider what resources were used by this person. Did they have access to what they needed? And that's what happened. You know, that's what created a problem or to get them to the next level of their career, what are they going to need? What resources will they need? And we don't want you to, to, to get into the, the uh, problems of, of someone who says, well, we don't want this, which is what I just said, right? Um, so no, we just want you to improve, right? Improve. Well, that's the goal. That's not the specific. You don't walk out of there with an improved statement. You walk out of there with action items. And you shouldn't be expected to do it alone, because that implies that there's a corporate culture problem. You're on a team. You should have access to corporate resources to meet those corporate goals that you were hired to meet. Everything should be actionable and achievable. It's like, yes, it can be accomplished. If it's just a general goal, how do you know it's been accomplished? 
Uh, it needs to be future oriented because that's what the company needs. This is not a time to beat people over the heads. This is, you want to use your time to meet corporate goals. That's why you're there. That's why you get a paycheck, corporate goals. And that's future oriented, always. And no all or nothing outcomes. Well, did you do it or did you not? So you need to break it down to 10% accomplished, 20%. So you need to be able to get credit because at some point, you may not be able to accomplish it through no fault of your own or your employees. So you need to break it down so that you can evaluate progress as it actually happens, not you know, binary, zero or one, because we know what that leads to. Um, it needs to be realistic. Can this be achieved in the timeline that you want it to be achieved? Um, do, does this person have the skill set? Do we need to send them to training? You know, all kinds of things. It does need to be realistic and not wishful thinking. And it needs to be relevant. If somebody says, we want you to do this, is that in your job description? Is that even in your team description? What the heck? I, as an, well, as an entrepreneur, I get advice every five minutes. And it's usually somebody that just wants my attention. So is it relevant to what I'm doing? You know, I'm a fashion design, well, I write fashion design software, so investors will start talking to me about their wife's quilting, and I'm like, not my market, right? It's not relevant. But I nod and smile and put up with it. But I know immediately it's not relevant, right? So that's a real good way to just stop listening and not worry about what this person is telling me because I don't have the CPU cycles to handle everything that, pe that people tell me. I have to narrow it down quickly and get to what's important. And, and you know, when I find somebody that gets it and can help me and I can help them, smart feedback is a really good way to, to accomplish that. Um, and if what they're telling you isn't relevant, then maybe your job description needs to be updated. That's a good time to bring it up. I mean, if it's a great thing to do, but it's not like official, you need to talk to them about your job description, your task description, your, what you're actually responsible for. You need to be uh, acknowledged for what you're being asked to do, right? It doesn't need to be like off the books. You need credit for what you do. It needs to be respectful. And being respectful means that if you're at a meeting and your manager says, oh, I need to tell you about this, I don't have time, so let me just give you this uh, information real quick. No. Feedback needs to be given, like you need to schedule it, you need to have a, a private place to talk, not as an aside at another meeting, not as you're walking down the hallway. No drive-bys, right? It's like, oh, you need to do da, da, da. It's like walking this way. I've seen that happen a lot. But that's not okay. You can't be held responsible for what somebody's just saying off the fly, because they may not have communicated to you what they think they communicated to you, because they're not really focused on it. So both sides of the table, the receiver and the giver of this feedback, need to make it, you know, it needs to be just you two in a private place. Um, and nothing hostile. If somebody's negative or hostile, you're not, your job description doesn't say that you have to meet their emotional need before you can get your job done. You can't parse through an envelope of barbed wire to get to the content of that letter. No hostility. No, and just say, look, your emotionality, I note it. I understand something's going on, but I can't, I can't parse what you're saying. We're going to have to do this when you, you know, maybe this afternoon, right? Um, again, if you've got a moment, that's inappropriate. And uh, no dump and run. So it's professional construct. I put this person here because that's... That's what you want in a manager. Like, I got to tell you something. <laughs> but it can be more professional than that. But you do want someone who's courteous to you, even if they're delivering bad news. Even if it's a, you know, something like, well, this is not great. The results aren't great this time. But we can have a plan to move forward. And then if the plan doesn't work out, and you as a manager have to be able to do that, then you have something specific to say, I have to let you go. Which is really important, because that's the worst thing as a manager that you can ever do. But then you can sleep at night because you know you've got the specifics, you got the data, and it really it was something that was beneficial for both sides. Um, timeline of actions. Again, when you have a feedback session, whether that's a daily stand-up or it's a you know, monthly feedback or even a, you know, a six-month feedback, fortunately, if it's six months, that's too late for today's business environment. But if you really don't have time and it's just a six-month review, you still need to they need to walk out of there with a timeline of actions, or you need to walk out of there with one as well, with uh, descriptions and dates, who's going to help you, what resources are available at your disposal, 
um, training list if that's required with dates, not, oh, we're going we're gonna to sign you up because in two weeks, that training budget's going to be spent, right? You're not going to get the training you need, but you're still responsible for achieving that goal. It's like, whoops, walk out of there with the dates or, or a, a follow-on meeting to talk about the dates, who you're supposed to go to. Like, okay, who do I go to to talk about this? You need specifics about your training. If they talk about it, you need to walk out of there with specifics. And a reporting list. If you've got to give a report every week, it needs to be listed. If it's a report you know, to your client in two months, that needs to be listed because you need credit for your deliverables. Um, and the outcomes. If you can achieve this or make a sales rate or you can fix these, this um, data overload on this particular leg of your network, you know, you get that done, then what's going to happen? What do you do? You know, what's the next step? Is, it, is there a reward where you just carry on? <laughs> no pats on the back, which happens more often than not. Um, but you don't want to walk out of there with a task that's not easily achievable. With no task that's easily achievable, that's failure. You should probably just start passively looking for another job, right? So as an example, there's performance reviews. Now, I'm going to move through this a little uh, fast because it's, it's really not, the example itself is not that important, but it covers a lot of really good concepts. Um, you want to create a feedback document. You always want it written so you've got re a record. And if your manager sits down with you and they don't have it written out, then you write it out. Always go to a review with pencil and paper. Not, you're not typing it up. You write it out by hand because actually you can write while you're looking at somebody in the eyes. You can't type and do that. Um, so, you know, you, you want to you walk out of there with a written record and you want to schedule, before you leave, schedule the next one or at least know like which week or month that's going to happen. Um, come up with a rating system. If you don't have one in your company, try to come up with something on your own. I'm going to have these on SlideShare. So I'll try to, to make that available uh, to you guys. Um, but yeah, come up with your own rating system. This is just an example of like percentages and it makes you feel better about your evaluation because evaluations are subjective at a certain level, but you wanna quantify that as much as possible. Um, so for like an agile standup, what do you do? You do establish a routine, respectful, right? You don't wait for late people and you always discuss in a constructive manner. Agile is so robust in so many ways, but it's kryptonite is disrespect. You get one person on your team, they can be the biggest rock star on the planet in your area, right? But if they're disrespectful to others, you can't get squat done. They may be operating at 110%, but the other five people on the team are beneath 50%, so what's your average? Are you really, is the corporation really gaining from that situation? So you have to keep that in mind, respect at all times. No, no dismissive behaviors, no, no, Anyway, we could get into that. I don't, uh, anyway, so assess performance. So you talk about quickly, you ask these questions. What did you accomplish? Uh, what you're going to work on? Uh, what's getting in your way? As a manager, that's what you want to know very quickly, very succinctly. And as an employee, that's what you want to tell them. These are the important things. Um, and no interruptions. You don't go, what? Jump in. Don't talk over other people. You let them talk. What's it going to hurt? Um, interrupting is kind of manipulative of a conversation, so just let it be. You might not agree, but let it be. Listen. Um, and no new topics for Agile. It's not a planning meeting. And no rambling, again. No, oh, I did this last night. Here's my dog. Here's my cat. That's sweet, but it's a stand-up. Do it later. You can do that, you know, outside the meeting. And try to enter your updates as you're talking to people into a project management tool because that's the best thing you can do for them because that way it's more accurate and it's terse and everybody in a tool that everybody has access to so they can read it. Um, so what's not so smart feedback? What's an example of bad feedback? Get this, I love this. When seven of 10 customers provided negative feedback about the recent implementation of online bill payment, we found Deborah quite flustered and unable to answer the issues customers raised effectively. She portrays a lack of knowledge in the new guidelines and in experience when it comes to dealing with challenging situations such as these. That's a load of hooey, is it not? I mean, sounds important. Sounds like they really did a lot of thought about this. 
they, they put no effort into this. And they're throwing Deborah under the bus. Uh, so can Deborah receive training on the software and new guidelines and be reevaluated re as an outcome? If I were Deborah, that's what I would ask. So how come we're not talking about that? Um, and why does it benefit them to just throw Deborah under the bus as a scapegoat rather than try to fix the problem? If Deborah needs more training, then get her the training, right? Um, and how much does it cost to replace, as a manager, you want to think, well, how much does it cost to replace her rather than train her? Because you hired her for a reason. You went through all that HR and interviews and stuff. There, there's a reason she's there. Why throw that away? Because you got to go through that again. That's an expensive process. And this is very specific about this particular feedback. Help desks run on numbers. <laughs> Why weren't Deborah's call totals or percentages referenced? So be aware. Be aware that this is the kind of running conversation you have to have in your head when you're receiving feedback, and it's like you feel like there, you have no recourse. It's just something that's been handed to you, and it's like, boom, that's it. You didn't do this right. You were just awful, basically, is what Deborah's going to walk out of there with. She's going to like, what? <laughs> what can I do? I'm a horrible person. I can never be employed. No one likes me, and I have no skills, and I'm very inexperienced. It's like, Ugh. And I'm flustered. Well, of course, she would walk out of that review even, you know, very flustered. I know I would. Um, so your job as a manager, really, is to provide smart feedback. So when A happened, well, we had this bad rollout of software, and the call center was on fire. We investigated and found that the call center was on fire. Um, and most people's calls were not treated in an effective, were not handled in an effective manner. Now, when we looked at Deborah's behavior, Deborah's flusteredness and lack of knowing the guidelines contributed to the call center being on fire. And another contributing factor is C. Guess when they had the, the training? Two days before the rollout, right? And it really wasn't all that thorough. So there's all these other things. B and C are caused by whatever. B and C can be corrected with training or by something else. This is the thought process you need to go through if you're going to provide somebody feedback for a negative event, right? So, and then, you know, it's like a call center training test is scheduled for two weeks because you don't want to single somebody out and shame them. Your job as a manager is not to humiliate and shame. Your job is to keep the company going. That's your job. Make money. Um, so you do an investigation. How long was this? So these are other questions that you get asked about this particular situation. You know, was there material available at the time for Deborah to use? You know, or was she just trained in a room like this off-site, and then she was back in the call center, and there was nothing to refer to. She, all she had was her memory, and everybody else was tied up on phone calls. There was no one to ask, Right. And then there's more, there's more, you know, what percentage of Deborah's calls? And all of this is basically help desk stuff. Um, and, and what about the rest of the help desk team? Deborah has a right to ask those questions. Was I the only one? Well, we're not going to talk about it. Well, no, she, she needs to know because she needs to know the numbers, how her numbers compared to everybody else's. Um, so you keep calm, stay friendly, and carry on, right? That is the main thing that we do as employees. Um, when you're dealing with people who are, you know, trying to sneak in their emotional needs at your expense because of something that happened at work, which happens a lot, because not everybody can hold it together. People get angry, people get flustered, and that's cool. You need to realize that there's a way to deal with it rather than saying, oh, it's a bad man saying bad words, which happens, but you need to have a tool set to deal with it. And there are many different tool sets. This is just one of them, the smart feedback. Um, so we're, uh, if you have any other questions, I'd, I'd be happy to answer them. I just wanted to give you this framework so that you could take this with you and say, I just got this weird feedback and I can't make heads or tails of it. I don't know what to do. What's your next step is to ask questions, right? Nail them down on what they mean, what their specifics were, how did they arrive at those conclusions, and say, I really need uh, to walk out of here with a timeline or the checklist, and what's going to happen when we accomplish this? You know, is there a promotion in the works? Or do I just get to keep my job? <laughs> Those are all valid questions and things that you can, that you have a right to, to, to know. So does anyone have anything that they'd like to discuss? If anybody does have any questions, head on up to the mic.
And you might just get some cool swag too. Yeah. Swag. Uh, I just want to thank you. That was really great. Um, how do you deal with people who give you feedback about their feelings? Like I got that feedback of, oh, you hurt my feelings when you did this, or you don't give me room to do this, and my feelings were hurt. And I'm like, I don't know what to do with that. The project turned out great. Brilliant, brilliant question. Because those that sort of advice really sounds like it comes from good housekeeping. Then a management review journal, right? You really don't need to talk about feelings at work. If you want to, great. But when someone forces you to say, well, you're, you just need to couch that in I statements, what's happening under the hood is that your feedback is being minimized and reduced to just, oh, it's just your perceptions. That's highly manipulative. It is not about perception. It is about specifics, numbers, evaluation. How did they get there? It's like, well, when you said that, I don't understand. There was so much emotionality there. I could not parse it. Better do that. And stay away from I statements because then, then you just dig a hole. It's like, I'm a diva. My feelings get hurt. Oh, my God. Everybody's after me. And that's how we feel. We, we feel like we know that we're kind of being judged that way every time we make an I statement. So just stay away from the I statements. Ignore the good housekeeping stuff. Go with your instinct. Make it professional. Make it business-like. Make it specific, respectful, you know, measurable. Actual. Find out, kind of do, you know, just pick one of those things that it didn't meet and go, well, you know what? I, I need more information here. And the level of emotionality that this, this information was delivered to me meant that I know I missed a lot of information there. That, uh, that by definition, because of the emotionality, they, it wasn't clear. So we can go through that again it with level heads. Does that, does that help? Yeah, I just need to get that response from them when they give me their feedback of, you hurt my feelings, you do this. I can be like, okay, I hear your emotion. Can we dig into the actual problem? What, what has to yeah. be the emotion? But that's not really... Does, it's not helpful, is it? It's not helpful. No. It just makes everybody feel a little silly. So it's like kindergarten. But it was nice, but it's not helpful. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Okay. I, I do have a question, too. Will your slide deck be available somewhere? Yes, I'm going to put it on SlideShare. I'm uh, Susan Spencer on SlideShare. And I, I should have put the link in my slides. I apologize. Did not do that. But yes, please, I will put that. I'm going to go to my hotel room after this and make this available. So if you want to go. Thank it. you. A little bit taller. Um, I was going to say, what are your thoughts on like smart feedback from coworker to coworker? Like if you're not necessarily in a managerial position, um, I know I've had to say, well, it was about interrupting me, but it's still feedback. And it was like in general for one person interrupting like everyone. So what are your thoughts on that? Ah, very good. You could say, well, I, you know, I understand that you had a question, but I was focused on what they were saying when you interrupted. And I, and I know that what you're saying is probably important. However, I was not able to get out, you know, you'd be, be specific, right? So I was not able to get her full thought when you stepped in to, to, to say what you said. So I need to hear what she says. So would you, can you turn to the other person and say, please say that again. So I guess like to add to that, like it's overall like an okay thing to use these like coworker to coworker and not just Absolutely. if you're in a managerial position. Cause like I said, I mean, you don't have to be like, you know, formal, this is not smart, this is not, but, yeah. but it gives you a, a concept to run in the back of your head to evaluate what's going on. And that interruption thing is a very big problem because people get excited. It's, it, they don't have to be like, they could be like, like me, they get excited. You start talking. It's like, oh, yeah, yeah. But just calm down. Just, you know, just wait a bit and we'll get to you. And, but I would like to hear what she had to say. Thank you. All right. I hope that was helpful. So I have something to add to your agile question list that I found super helpful. Okay. Uh, you know, it's like the planned, what you did and what your roadblocks are. The one that I found super, super useful mm -hmm. is a frustrations list. 
So it's not that you're blocked by it, but it's things like the build is taking me two hours to run. The reason why I found that useful is very briefly is a lot of people think that they're the only ones. And then when you call it out in a meeting, it's like, oh yeah, the build is taking a ridiculously long time for me too. And you don't feel so alone with, with what um, was blocking you. And now the question. How do you, so I've been doing, been in tech a long time and a recent, well, not recently, I've been in management too. And I've run into a couple of situations where I felt like, you know how it is when you're dealing with a kid who's like 10 years old and they're just whying you to death. They don't want to do something. They're just going, why, why, why? Yeah, yeah. So I've been getting that a lot from guys that mm -hmm. I'm trying to manage. Yeah. Why, why, why? And I'm like, at a certain point, it's like, it may be best of intention, but at a certain point, I'm just like, just effing do it. Yes. You know, it's like the inverse, uh, inverse of the explainer. It's like, let me explain all this to you. It's like, oh, I want you to explain to me infinitely. So I don't have to do the work. Yeah. So and then I, I got it. labeled the, the B word kind of thing. And right. that led to a bad outcome for me. So, so wondering what you'd throw to that. All right. So they're asking you all these questions. I feel like they're not going to, like they're just sort of spinning wheels until you, um, they'll only do the work if you can provide a good enough answer. It's like, well, at a certain point, you got to say, well, this is what's relevant. Mm -hmm. This is the job. And we have to get this done by this time. And I do appreciate that you want to know more information. So I'll tell you what, once you get this done, we'll sit down and we'll discuss the whole management plan or some, rele some more relevant man. I can give you some more management insight on that, but we need to get this done now. So you make it specific. So there's like uh, weird. It's very non-specific stuff, or, or or just continual questioning. So again, you make it specific and you make it relevant. But you do give them something. You give them sort of a the next meeting. Here's my specific feedback to you right now. We have a goal. We do need to meet this goal, and there it's it's timely. And other people are depending upon it, or whatever is whatever is appropriate for your team. Say so we need to do this, but I'll tell you what, let's schedule a time Friday afternoon, bring me your questions, and I'm happy to talk about it. And okay. that'll did they write your questions down and we'll go through them. And I'll be happy. And you know, you, 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 and you. We'll just sit down and do it. Bring me your questions. We're gonna do that Friday afternoon, specific and it's respectful because you've given them a time, it's away from everybody else. You have you're gonna give them your full attention. I can give you my full attention on that at this time, because you want to, you, you may suspect that they're just trying to, you know, get out of stuff or, or whatever it is, wherever their headspace is, that's fine. You know, their internal landscape is their responsibility, but your responsibility is to get the job done, right? Does that make sense? Yeah, it does. So basically, to summarize what you're saying is, hey, try to get them to pause and do, and, and do something, and then with the, with the commitment that you will address in a different venue, any number of why questions they have. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so I, I hope that was helpful. Swag. Yay. No, good swag. Did you get good swag? I, I was going to add one thing on the interruption um, issue, only because I, there very recently um, I was guilty of it. I interrupted a coworker. I apologized profusely. We apologized, or I apologized in a one on one. But then, what I ended up doing in a huge public chat where all the employees were, I put in there that I did a huge, very ungoogly thing. Um, and I explained what it was and so on. I was amazed at the number of people said, thank you for doing this cat and for making it a teachable moment and for me learning. And so, and I'm going, wow, I was expecting to kind of get, well, we're glad you learned from it cat or something like that, but instead completely kind of opposite. So it really revealed the power of leadership when they, when they follow the guidelines themselves, they're not above the rules. They follow the rules. And they realize that they, you know, they need to keep the corporate culture. They need to maintain the trust with the people that they work with. So 
it's no big deal. You didn't lose any reputation. You lost nothing from that. You gained social capital. And, I mean, you might not care about that, but it is a, something that you need as a manager, as a leader, uh, for you know people to trust you and want to follow you. Oh, yeah. And I am a manager, so I was very cognizant of, oh, Lord, I screwed up. And, you know, I always say everybody in every meeting gets to finish their sentences. And then we discuss whatever it was they brought up. But to be guilty of it, we all make mistakes. And if someone's taking up too much time, you're specific, you go, okay, that's, that's great. We're going to have to, if you could, you know, kind of shorten that up and you're respectful to them, but there's a reason why you're telling them not, we don't want to hear from you. We're tired. We're a little bored now. Let's go to somebody else. That's not good feedback. It's like, oh, time. Yeah. Are there any other questions? Well, if there are no other questions, thank you again. This was a great talk. It was talk. a privilege to present to you today. Thank you. We've got a short break before the next talk. So please go network, check out the vendors, um, corral Sue outside, ask her more questions. <laughs> you never know. And maybe she'll tell you about the fashion software that she wrote.